Hello folks, here we go again. I'm back on 26th of March, Tuesday. Hello. And cheers. Well, it's springtime, but we're having a blizzard in western Nebraska. <clears throat> it's just slightly snowing here. But I understand that it's blizzard conditions in parts of the state. Good old weather. <clears throat> well, I'll check the uh, comments to see if there's anything to comment to respond to. But good news. I um, went ahead and got a hold of David Hawes of Catherine Wheel yesterday. I was thinking about it, you know. So I just reached out to him and, and, and asked him if he would be interested in coming on the channel and talking about his time in the band. He said, yeah. So David Haw of Catherine Wheel will be on Saturday. Catherine Wheel are still, I think I'm pretty objective about this. To me, they are one of the best bands out of the 90s. And they're one of my favorite English bands, period. Along with Guy Ch Ch House of Love and the Beatles and a few others. Now, Dave, David Haw, Hawes was the bass player and um, not the main person. So some people might be wondering, well, why do you want to talk to him? Don't you want to talk to Rob Dickinson? Well, I've actually um, met the band years ago, met Rob Dickinson, saw Catherine Will twice. The second time, David was already out of the band, and they had the Radiohead, Tom York-looking bass player. It wasn't the same at all. And so when I met Rob and we hung out backstage and talked and talked at length, he needed to talk to someone. It was over, and he told me, you know, you know, this is it. He was very dejected and real discouraged about um, the whole business of being in, of trying to make it, knowing how brilliant the band is, knowing how good his work is, and not being able to break through in a large way. Um, being in a band and touring and all that, that's hard. So that's, so to me, Catherine Wheel was a band, not a Rob Dickinson thing. Being a drummer as well as a bass player, I, I know how important the rhythm section, more so than I think the average person, because most people focus on the vocals and the look of, of, of artists. I happen to know that it's the engine of the music that makes it great or not, and that's the rhythm section, the bass player and the drummer. And... David's bass playing was subtle. It was subtle. Am I going to have... Did you see that? I hope we don't have a blackout here. Um, but it was important. Sublime bass playing. So... I keep grabbing the stack and putting it down. I have most of their records... Show Me Mary. They did a great run of 12-inch um, singles. Crank. Here's when I got this signed. 30th Century Man. Uh, Scott Walker cover. I like this. I like this version better than his. She's My Friend. These songs are fantastic. The songs, the sound of the band. One of my favorites. Um, David was out of the band by the time they made this album, Wishville. I saw them on this tour as well as I saw them on the Happy Days tour. So that's when I saw Dave with them. This is a good album, but it doesn't compare to the early stuff. The spark was gone. This could maybe be a masterwork for them. I'm, I intend to ask about it. Adam and Eve. Brilliant, brilliant album. 
Should have broken him through. This could have done it too. Happy days. Pretty heavy. I have two copies of this because there was a misprint where there's supposed to be an extra track and and it says it, but it's not on the record. So I had to get it twice to get the track. And then their first album, Ferment. What a brilliant, brilliant beginning. I bought a, a reissue of it. Cats and Dogs. Cats and Dogs. Storm Thorgerson of Hypnosis, who, as you know, worked with <clears throat> on Pink Floyd covers. I have a book about um, Hypnosis. And Storm Thorgerson thought that Pink Floyd, I mean, that Catherine Will were a band like Pink Floyd. Special Chrome. This is amazing. And I agree with it. And he treated them as such, but it didn't, and it never happened. Painful thing. And this is one I'd like to play. I, I've gone through Jags in the past where I'm playing a lot of Catherine Wheel and nothing else and covering it. There's a cover, Catherine Wheel covers compilation project that happened a long time ago. It's online. It's archived online. I participated. I did Half-Life, so I'm on there. And um, I won't show them, but I'll, I'm not going to go through them all, but this is all I'm letting you know Catherine Wheel is important to me. That's all Catherine Wheel. Hell of a man, hell of a man, excuse me. Sir. Just getting just getting the house heated up for the day. It snowed. So let's see if there's anything in the comments to um, respond to. Yeah, Jack is the, is the bomb, Jack DeJanet. Yeah, Julia Holter does strike me as a, some kind of genius. And then someone here uh, mentions that the Kiln CD that I showed, I haven't played it again since, but he shares that the um, drum tracks recorded were recorded in his living room. How cool is that? And then uh, P. Jr., you know, I'm not going to debate my opinion, you know, and I'm not going to be casting judgment on Nusrat Fateh Ali Khan. I love his voice. Who knows if he was singing for money for God? I'm not going to judge, okay? So that's, that's what's going on this morning. <clears throat> Thank you for the sale. I'd like some more. You ought to get this music. That's the main thing, <clears throat> is I'm excited that I have another guest Saturday. This is happening Saturday. Dave Hawes of Catherine Wheel, okay? Um, honestly, the only thing that got played yesterday, I watched some documentaries. I'll talk about that, but I played Lush, Split. Mickey Berenier. Cool songs. Cool songs. I don't relate to the words a whole lot. It's all I like her voice and I like the, the songs. So I watched. I rented the documentary The Immediate Family. So there was the Wrecking Crew in the 60s, the 50s and 60s, who played on all of the all of the pop records 
in the charts it was the same band when i was a kid about sixth grade i remember this noticing this and i can almost recall what it was i heard a birds record on the radio and then i heard a mamas and papas but it sounded like the same band i noticed i remember noticing as a kid listening to aretha franklin uh forget which one it was but it was when she went down south and was on atlantic and i was able to tell uh, this rhythm section is good but these guys are white not that that's a criticism but it's just especially back in the 50s and 60s when the divide between black um music skills and white skills was was much wider and over time the cultures have melded especially musically and white people can play with a whole lot of feel since then but back then it was unusual you know but i could tell so anyway the immediate family is about the wrecking crew that replaced the wrecking crew which was basically danny korchmar Craig Dorge, Wadi Wachtel, Leland Sklar, and Russ Kunkel. And uh, it's a great documentary. I really enjoyed it. Their story is, um, it's a very interesting story about American music and how things made the switch, how the Wrecking Crew were involved as things switched, you know, from the time when artists, artists hardly even did their own music. You know, the Beatles changed that. And then the singer songwriter thing that happened at, started to happen at the very beginning of the seventies, kind of heralded the uh, end of the Wrecking Crew's days and these new guys and it, the way that it just very naturally, they ended up working together. It's a great story. I've seen and met Lee Sklar. I have, he's actually my um, profile picture on my Facebook page today. When I met him, he could tell I was a bass player. The guy's great, great person, what a heart. And I've seen Russ Kunkel play um, probably twice. Once with Jimmy Buffett, which was one of the worst shows ever for me. And uh, I think I've seen him with Jackson Brown as well. And Jackson Brown was was wonderful in concert. So I enjoyed that. I also watched um, a couple of um, documentaries about the band The Obsessed, mainly about Scott Wino. You guys that know metal and hard rock, if you don't know about Wino, you don't know shit, okay? I mean, I'm being opinionated, but in a lighthearted way. Seriously, if you don't know who Wino is, it's like, come on now. And you like hard rock? Come on. Really enjoyed watching that stuff. I don't have obsessed records. I'm not going to buy any. He's someone who I can tell. I would love to meet him and just hang out with him. Re the real deal. You know what I'm saying? Just a no bullshit person. That's why I like to meet people. Um, I'm as broken as the next person, but one of my skills is I have a pretty good bullshit detector. And um, it goes off. It does. When I met uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers, Anthony didn't pass. He, maybe maybe he would now, because I, I understand he's matured. Um, oh, shoot. I was going to try Oh, you know, they didn't get the fog. I was going to try to mention some other folks, you know, who I've met. But anyway, that's what's up today. I'm kind of rambling. Hmm. Not sure what else to share, okay? So I'm going to leave it right here. Saturday is my next guest, David Hawes of Catherine Wheel. Looking forward to it. I'm very curious about his story. You know, I'd like to hear about the origins of the band. And um, my impression is that it was a band. It wasn't Rob Dickinson's band. It was a band that everyone was important. So I intend to check that out. 
I think that's all I really have to share this morning, okay? Talk to you later. Hmm.